morning, everybody, and welcome back to Pre-K Art Day here at the Living Arts and Science Center. Today we have a really great book in store. It's called Alma and How She Got Her Name. What I love about this story is it's all about a little girl learning the history of her name and kind of how her parents decided to give her her name. So I think it would be a really fantastic opportunity for you to ask your parents how you got your name or maybe to ask them how they got theirs. So come on in close and we'll start our story. Alma and How She Got Her Name by Juana Martinez Neal. Alma Sofia Esperanza Jose Pura Candela had a long name, too long if you ask her. My name is so long, Daddy, it never fits, Alma said. Come here, he said. Let me tell you the story of your name. Then you decide if it fits. Sophia was your grandmother, he began. She loved books, poetry, jasmine flowers, and of course, me. She was the one who taught me how to read. Well, I love books and flowers, and you too, Daddy. I am Sophia. Esperanza was your great-grandmother, he continued. She hoped to travel, but never left the city where she was born. Her only son grew up to cross the seven seas. Wherever her sailor son went, so did Esperanza's heart. The world is so big. I want to go see it, Daddy. You and me together. I am Esperanza. Jose was my father, Alma's daddy said. He was an artist with a big family like many people had back then. Early each morning, he walked to the mountains and the plazas to paint everyday life. Sometimes I went along. Your grandfather taught me to see and love our people. I wake up early every day and I draw a lot too. This morning, I drew a kitty cat for you, Daddy. I am Jose. Pura was your great aunt. She believed that the spirits of our ancestors are always with us, watching over us. When you were born, she tied a red string around your wrist, a charm to keep you safe. Hello, Pura. It's me, Alma. Candela was your other grandmother. She always stood up for what was right. I am Candela. I love the story of my name. Now tell me about Alma, Daddy. Where does that come from? I picked the name Alma just for you. You are the first and only Alma. You will make your own story. Alma Sofia Esperanza Jose Pura Candela. That's my name and it fits me just right. I am Alma, and I have a story to tell. The end. Wow, wasn't that a great story? I absolutely love that one. I think it's so cool how all of our names are unique and how we get to have one just for ourselves. So let's do a craft that's all about our name. We'll head on over to our table to get started. All right, so some of you might know your letters already, and if you already know your alphabet, you're gonna have a really easy time with today's craft. But if you don't, don't worry. Mom or dad can help you with this step. So what we're gonna to need today is we're gonna need our cardboard. A nice long piece like this works really well. We're gonna need some plants and leaves, flowers. We're gonna need some scissors, a pencil, and some double-sided tape. So take a minute to gather those things. If you need to pause the video, that's a-okay. 
And once you've got all of that collected, we're going to start with our cardboard and our pencil. So our first step is going to be for us to write our name across our cardboard. So my name is Miss Anna, so I'm going to write Anna on mine. And that's spelled A N N A. And I'm going to write it nice and big. And like I said, if you have trouble with this part, have mom or dad help you. Now our very next step is going to be to use some of our double-sided tape. So I think a good thing is maybe if you know your letters, you could do the writing and then mom or dad could help with this step here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our double-sided tape to go over our name. So this might take a minute, but I'm going to go through and I'm going to put tape all over all of the lines on my name. You can use your scissors to cut your tape if you're having trouble with it, or you can use the tape dispenser like I am. But the cool thing about double-sided tape is that you stick it down and then you can peel the top layer off. So a good thing to do is maybe have your grown-up stick it on for you and then you can do the part where you peel it off, which I think is kind of fun. All right, so I'm all done putting my tape over my letters that I wrote. Now, I didn't want to make you guys sit through all that, so I kind of kind of speed us through that part, but yeah, you want to get all of your letters covered with that double-sided tape so that they're nice and sticky. Because now we get to do the fun part where we take all of the cool things that we collected from outside and we decorate our name and turn it into something really beautiful that we can maybe put in our bedroom or display in our house. So I'm gonna start picking out some of the things I collected and I'm gonna start sticking them right on that double-sided tape. I found some really cool flowers. You might find something totally different than what I picked out in your yard. So I think it's really special how everybody's is gonna be a little bit different, just like our names. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna pick some things to put over my letters. I found these really great purple flowers. You can use just the petals. I'll do some petals here on the end. And they should just stick right to that tape. So all you have to do is figure out what you want to put and where you want to put it. I also found these plants which have these really pretty red leaves and I thought that would be cool to get some color going with my yellow flowers or my purple flowers to try and get some different color leaves. So I'm going to use some of these on my skinny middle part here on my A. Now if you have a really long name, just like Alma, you might need to get a bigger piece of cardboard than I used. So try and uh, hunt down a piece of cardboard that will work well for your name. And also, if you collect leaves in your yard, let's say you have some leaves that are really big, you can absolutely cut them. So that's part of the reason that we have these scissors with us. Like this would be way too big for me to use, but I think I still would like to use some of this top part. So I'm just gonna use my scissors and cut a few pieces that I think would work. Mm-hmm. Starting to look really nice, I think. Some little purple flowers. Stick some of those on there. I think I wanna put my yellow flowers in some strategic spots here. Spread them out. I think I'm gonna make sure that one of each of my letters gets a really nice yellow flower in a different spot. And then I'm gonna use my leaves to fill in the areas I didn't get covered. If you find some small skinny leaves like this, these work really well for what we're doing. Because the goal is for us to still be able to read our names at the end. So we want to kind of make sure that whatever plants we pick and whatever we use, that we cut it small enough so that it doesn't completely cover up the letters. We want to use these to create our letters. I need 
going to use some more of my purple flowers. You know what I think is really cool about this too? Is that the two flowers I have are yellow and purple. And yellow and purple are actually complementary colors. We learned a little bit about what those are last week. That means that they're opposite of each other on the color wheel. So they're the opposite colors of one another. And that's why when you put them together, they look so beautiful. So if you noticed my yellow and purple, especially when you put them next to each other, they look really bright and colorful. So maybe you want to use some different complementary colors on yours. Maybe you want to use red and green. Maybe you find some red and green leaves that work. Oh, and you might have some little bugs or little critters on your flowers too. That's okay, we'll just kind of let them go off to the side. We probably disturbed them. We stole their home. So if you find any bugs, it might be nice to just let them go outside since you, since you probably stole their leaf. I think I want to use some more of these red ones. Something like this is good because you can cut just the right amount that you need, just like I did right there. Do it again up here. One last piece, I'm gonna put it right there. All right, now I'm gonna hold this up so that you guys can see. Look at how beautiful my name looks. I love it. I think I'm gonna hang it in my office. So I hope that you guys had fun with this craft today. Your names should probably come out really beautiful. No matter what you pick up outside, they're gonna look really cool at the end. I hope that you guys had fun and that you'll join us again next week for Pre-K Art Day. Have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.